Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shivkumar and in today's video, I'm going to talk about altitude measurement by interfacing the Bosch BMF, BMP585 Absolute Barometric Pressure Sensor with the NRF5340. Now this sensor, which is supposedly a new sensor from Bosch, uh, boasts the ability to measure altitude down to just a few centimeters. Now imagine that precision because such capabilities is incredibly useful and particularly in calculating the altitudes of drones. Now moreover, this sensor isn't limited to altitudes alone, it also can measure temperature. So it's quite a versatile sensor. Now throughout this video, uh, I'm going to walk you through the process of interfacing the Bosch BMF585 with the Nordic NRF5340. We'll establish the connections between the sensor and the NRF5340. We'll dwell into the intricate writing of the device drivers to make the whole setup work. And finally, we'll try to leverage the UR terminal to measure and read the measurements from the Bosch BMP585 Absolute Barometric Sensor. So let's just drive in and let's get started. Now for this demonstration, I am using the BMP585 shuttle board from Bosch. This is the connection diagram of the breakout board. It has VDD, VDD IO, which is separated. And I've connected 3.3 volts to each of these individually. I have connected the SCL to the port 12 of my Nordic Semi and SDA to the port 13, port 1, uh, port 1 pin 13 of uh, my Nordic Semi. And the SDO is to ground so that the address is now 46. The connection diagram looks something of the sort. So port 12, port 1 pin number 12 is the SCL. Port 1, pin number 13 is the SDA. The SDO is connected to the ground and the 3.3 volts from the NRF5340 will power the VDD and the VDD IO of this board. That's all the connections that we have. So let's dive in and start looking at the code. Now, similar to my previous video where I interface with the power meter, in the same context, I am using the same I2C pins, but in my I2C pins, that's where I've basically uh, programmed the SCL and SDA to port 1, pin 13, port 1, pin 13. But in the overlay file that I have over here, I have added the BMP585 and the address is 46. And that's one thing you, you need to understand with Zephyr is once you program the or write the configuration for what you need and how the connections are done, it will take care of a lot of the heavy lifting for you in terms of you know sending the I2C command and uh, making the interface work. So the, a lot of the heavy lifting is already done by just writing this particular statement over here. So for my I2C1, I'm adding another module. I'm using the same pins. And this time we're going to address to address this address of the BMP585 is going to be 46. And similar to my previous videos, I have had I have a sensor folder in here. And in here I have the absolute barometric pressure for the BMP585. <coughs> I have cloned their repository into the BMP585. P5 sensor API, which you can get online. Here you find the BMP5 sensor API that you can find online, and it says that it works with the BMP585, 581, and 5840. So I've added this as a module to my repository. And this is the BMP585 sensor API. I've literally just added it and cloned it into the repository. Now, in order for me to make this work, I had to write some particular device drivers or glue code that would work with the Nordic Semi. So in here, I have the read sensor data normal mode API, which I've taken from the example folder itself, the read sensor data normal mode API. And I've pretty much copied pasted most of the code out there. And I've removed it and put it into my root folder. And in here, what I've done is created a thread known as the barometry, barometer normal mode thread. And it initializes uh, the interface, making sure that the I2C works. And if it doesn't work, it'll give you some errors. So you wait for 100 milliseconds and then it's doing some initialization, setting the configuration. And once the configuration is done, we start to loop in and try to look for, try to read the data continuously. In the main thread over here, I have written the barometer normal mode thread, which will be running as soon as it starts. So we have a couple of threads right now. I've disabled the thread, uh, the, the power meter mode because I'm just gonna show you the, the 
the display of the barometric pressure. So in this particular configuration, we already had it many threads and each one of these sensors is now going to be independently working in a different thread. It just makes it more parallel and, and, and the computation and everything working in a much more multi-threaded uh, environment. That's the reason of using the Zephyr RTOS. And in here, I've had a few device of what you say, glue code, which is for the read and write. I am using the I square C interface. You could use the SPI interface as well, but the SPI interface, I'm dedicating it mostly for the IMU. Everything else can be I square C because I do believe the IMU needs to be, I, SPI offers a much higher bandwidth. So I wanted to, for many mission critical tasks, such as the IMU, the, the reading from there would probably be more meaningful to use that interface. But I could also use SPI. It's, there's no, you know, there's no, nothing stopping me from using the SPI. But in this particular case, I'm using the I square C. And here we do the MCU I square C transfer. Uh, this is when if you're if you're reading and if you're writing, it's very similar. You you allocate some memory, um, and the memory is allocated into a buffer, and then you do the I, I square C transfer. Now the MCU I two C transfer is uh, is a common code where where I where both the sensors, including the um, power meter and the parameter, is now using. And in here, all it's doing is doing the I square C read write by taking all these parameters and doing the read write in the actual uh, to the actual hardware. So all of this is very, what do you say, modular. Um, this The code is well uh, structured in my opinion. And you can have a look because the GIP repository is now available for, um, it's, it's open sourced. So have a look over here, uh, the absolute barometric pressure, the BMP585, if you want to know more into how the code is structured. Everything else in here is already been defined by Bosch. So I haven't really done anything with it other than just using these APIs. So I won't go more into the details because that you probably might want to ask Bosch how everything exactly works. But a lot of it is basically looking at the data sheet, understanding what the register values are and interpreting those values. So now let's try to understand and you know get some readings. These are the connections. Now a zoomed out view of the breakout board is over here. I've connected some PCB bytes, which is allows me to connect the terminals and see how these things are uh, and how, how to interface with the module. So in here, I have the NRFI 340 and I have a couple of sensors. And because the pins are very, very close together, I had to use the PCB bytes um, um, probes to you know do all the connections as uh, just a normal 2.4 millimeter um, sockets did not work. This is, I think 1.25 millimeter apart. So I had to use that in order to make this work. So these are very, very close. So I had to use this, these probes to get the connection. So this is the, this is the data line. This is the clock line. And one of them is connected to the ground. And then we have the VCC and ground as well. Now here you can see, I am recording the readings. It goes from one to 50, it stops one minute, uh, one second, and then again, it continues. So this side is all the barometric reading and this side is the temperature. So the current temperature is 27 degrees in my particular room, uh, which is pretty hot. So if you look at this reading over here, it goes to the, it goes to get sensor data. And in get sensor data, we have a counter of one is to 50. Now this is taken from the example code. So I'm not really modified it and I've just left it that way, but nevertheless it's getting the sensor data and then it's printing the data. So you have like BM, it's, it's collecting the data with pressure and temperature. It's doing the readouts and then you print it out over here. And here is the reading. It can, goes from zero to 49 and then again, it loops over. In here, I have the logic analyzer. So if you look at the logic analyzer, you can see that it's collecting the 50 samples, waiting for one second, and again, collecting the 50 samples, waiting for one second, and so on and so forth. So that concludes the video in interfacing the BMP585 with the NRFI340. You can slow down the videos and see how I basically made this, work, this particular sensor work with the NRFI340. You can also download the code and get a feel of you know playing with it so that you could get it working for yourself. Now, if you want to know more videos like this, I highly recommend you check out my previous video on how I interface the NRFI340 with the power meter, the INA228, and that link is right here. So until next time, please like, please subscribe, and take care.